teenagers, for the most part, are little rat bags, little gopniks. They want to smoke ciggies out the back of the house. They want to uh, have their first shag. They want to do all sorts of rebellious stuff. Welcome to the Urban Property Invest. I'm your host, Sam Saggers, here to help you crack the code of real estate wealth. Today's show, adult growth models and biases that affect us as property investors. If it's your first time tuning into the show, welcome aboard. Play the program in double speed. And guess what, you crazy urban property investors? Guess what happened to me? My neon sign, the urban property investor, blew up. Yes, I'm signless. It's my first podcast in a very long time that I have not glowed by virtue of a neon sign. It fried itself. It actually almost caught on fire. I don't know if signs inside homes are actually a fire hazard, but I feel like my one is. I uh, literally had to pull the ripcord. Hey, welcome back. Welcome aboard. We're going to tackle some ideas inside of real estate that real estate investment is not just about real estate. It's actually about our state of mind as much of any as much as it is about just choosing a great property. Of course, I always say this a lot. You put uh, two investors side by side, help them buy a similar property, similar street, similar neighborhood. Years later, you often find that one investor has held out and made it through to financial success, and the second investor has not. Property is a game of psychology. Often it is said that any sort of investment is 80% psychology and 20% the investment. I like to say the phrase, property is reliable, people are not. How do we become reliable as a human being? Well, quite often that means we need to examine some of the flaws human beings have and make sure we're educating ourselves to actually understand ourselves. And of course, one of the best ways to understand that is to understand both cognitive biases that we get affected by, but also, as I'll sort of allude to today, there is a model known as the adult growth model whereby we as human beings can examine ourselves and give ourselves a little diagnosis as to whether we're being a bit of a kid, whether we're being just a silly teenager, a young adult or a wise old person with our logic, with our thinking and what we're going through. So the idea of that we have to develop a pretty sound mindset inside of real estate is a real one because probably the first thing that happens to most people is some sort of consensus bias. Today, a lot of people get their news from one source, uh, surf social media using similar things. And of course, those algorithms are designed to serve you what you want to hear or what you want to see. Very helpful if you're looking for a nice pair of Nikes. Not so helpful if you're concerned about the property market because you'll probably get served what you want to be concerned about. And of course, today, when it comes to investing, education is not abundant and different points of views out in the marketplace is also harder to come by. My advice to you is listen to lots of podcasts, read lots of books, visit lots of events, get to know real estate, and of course, the different points of view out in the marketplace. Don't just have one narrative in the back of your mind around real estate because it could be the wrong narrative. There's lots of in my opinion, of wrong narratives today inside the real estate marketplace. Now, think about the idea of the adult growth model. It's a really simple model that it breaks down our life cycle as humans into different stages. Our early stage life, if you like, where a you know young child, um, we're very reliant upon our parents to help us get to where we need to go. A teenager can quite often be very rebellious as they 
go through that pubescent period of their life. Early adulthood, people have a almost realization that results matter, that they need to drive a better car, own a better house. Uh, you know, they need to study harder to get a better job. They need to focus in on their career. And all of a sudden, you know, as young adulthood happens, results really become a thing for people. It becomes really scary quite often for many people. And of course, as you grow older and quite often, you know, a lot of people in their later ages of life have these realizations and learn from their mistakes. And today, as a property investor, I've made so many mistakes. I've probably made more mistakes than any other property podcaster doing podcasts. But I've also learned along the way, and I've also been able to amass a pretty good portfolio, which today I stick by and I stand by because I've learned so much about myself, what I'm capable of, what I'm not capable of, and what plans work for me. So today I'm going to give you a reminder of the plans that are working in my world, they work for my customers, but also we're going to go over some of the psychology around our life stages. Now, remember the first stage, if you like, of life is when a child is born. And of course, perhaps till they're a teenager, they're really reliant upon their parent. When young children don't get looked after early on in their life or they suffer some trauma that carries with them all the way through their life. And it's very interesting knowing people that have had traumas in their childhood, just how it actually affects them as their life unfolds. They seemingly need to deal with that. Now, property investment is very, very similar. If you set yourself up wrong in the beginning, if you're not nurtured correctly from day one, really, you'll end up in a place later where you're just not happy with where you've got to. See, the reality is, if we are reliant upon the marketplace doing all the work for us from a property investment perspective, we're potentially setting ourselves up for failure. Quite often, when it comes to being an early stage property investor, when we're getting started, most people need the market to do the work or the rates need to be perfect for them or they need to be reliant upon positive news. It really is an interesting place that a lot of people today get stuck even getting started and don't make it through their first life journey as a property investor. They let so many little things cheat them out of big opportunities. So one of the things that I think is really critical, like a child needs a parent, I often think the best thing for people to do when they're getting started with real estate is to make sure they form a team. Have some people help you who have been there before realize their mistakes so that you don't make the mistakes that they did. That's kind of the best thing about being a property investor. It's a great community. There are people that will give you so much opinions, but also some good strategy and advice. Now, again, a lot of property investors fail to own real estate and make it to young adulthood, if you like, when it comes to being an investor. Again, you put two people onto a property investment, same investment side by side, could be a duplex. One side of the duplex has one investor, the other side an alternative investor, you'll get two completely different results. A lot of it has to do around reliance. Quite often, property investors are very reliant, again, on positive news, the real estate market always going well. And when that struggles or when that changes, they change. And all of a sudden, they can't cope 
with the situation. And fear is a big driver inside of real estate. People get fearful. They're fearful. What if the real estate market crashes? What if I can't afford the property? What if my tenant leaves? What if uh, the insurance goes up? What if the rents go down? Fear controls a lot of people's certainty. And really, fear is an illusion. And it is often referred to as a illusory correlation. So let's think about this, right? A child, young child gets bitten by a dog. Uh, are all dogs bad? No, but that child in turn becomes afraid of all dogs and runs every time they see one. This is an illusion. The child is having an illusion. The market crashing, uh, rents going down, uh, you know, the, you know, things, bad things happening is quite often fear and quite often fear is basically an illusion and it is anxiety. And as such, uh, a lot of property investors, again, if they're not mentored right, if they're not reminded constantly, then they let fear cheat them out of wealth, real wealth. And the fact you're probably listening to this podcast is probably a representation that you're not actually going to let fear control you. The fact you're listening to this tells me that you want to make it through this journey, which is property investment. Now, remember, property investment is a, is a long thing. It takes years and years and years to be the beneficiary of the results of property investment. Yes, you can make a quick buck out of property, but real wealth comes over time. And I think for a lot of people getting into the property market, they do not plan properly. They have a planning bias. Now, again, uh, for a toddler, if you like, they have to crawl before they walk. For property investors, we have to crawl before we walk as well. And everything takes longer than we expect. Everything. Uh, you know, we often as property investors tend to overestimate what's going to happen in the next year and actually underestimate what you can achieve in the next 10 years, the next 15 years, the next 20 years. In Western culture, we are not really taught to think long term. In many of the Asian cultures, that's the opposite. Quite often, Western people will start a business and only have a business plan for one year. A short-term business plan in Japan is 20 years. A lot of Asian families will buy real estate with the horizon of that real estate being passed on within the family. A lot of Anglo property investors are trying to make a quick buck in the next three months. And what this does is it creates a planning bias. It creates a false illusion that quite often real wealth is obtained quite quickly. And for a lot of property investors, this means they fail to go through the distance. They never get out of being a toddler because they have a mindset of a child. They have a mindset of an adolescent. They don't make it to adulthood because they don't think like an adult. I think adults think wisely. Time in the market is going to do the work. The time horizon is a big conversation. The longer you hold real estate, the longer the compounding effect of real estate offers. And of course, if you look at any investment, quite often the second half of the investment outperforms the first half of the investment by virtue of what is known as compounding growth. Einstein called it the eighth wonder of the world. The idea that you can buy something today, it grows a little bit, but then the second form of that growth hits the uh, new value of that thing. For real estate, you buy a property, I don't know, $500,000. It might take 
longer to become $750,000 than it does to become a million dollars. It's an interesting dynamic. The second half of your growth cycle will be faster than your first half. Compounding interest, the time horizon of real estate. Now, again, we create all these anchors, this stuff in our brain, and it anchors us to all sorts of things. Mistakes happen when choosing real estate, when you're a baby property investor, because we anchor onto stuff. And quite often we rely heavily when we first get going on the information first introduced to us to make decisions. This is known as anchoring bias. So a lot of anchoring bias in real estate is driven in the now, if you like. Hot markets, fancy strategies, next hotspots. Uh, these are all anchoring things to get us going. Instant equity, making money, anchor, anchor, anchor. And of course, what anchoring bias can do can quite often mean that the infant property investor is chasing birds, chasing the wrong thing, something that's not sustainable, something that lacks fundamentals, something that isn't going to grow, something that isn't going to be nurtured, just like the child whose parents didn't look after it. This is why I teach the Forex growth plan. It's a simple plan for buy and hold real estate. If you want to trade real estate, I teach dumbbell or barbell investing. At one side of the barbell, like a weight, you've got buy and hold. It's The idea of it is conservative. It's The idea of it is long. The idea of it is a time horizon that goes for a very long time. The other side is trading and making money and adding value to real estate and buying something to sell it, to flip. It's short term. It's higher risk. The two pigeon pair each other. But certainly when it comes to the idea of getting started, buying the right property, something that's going to have the right fundamentals that won't sabotage you later when it comes to property investment is my Forex growth model. Buy well, good location, solid marketplace, and influences behaviors which are going to affect positively your location. It could be a great park across the street. It could be a a great set of shops close by. Uh, It could be the view the property has, behaviors. The 4X growth plan, setting yourself up right so that you're not anchored to an illusion. That's why I developed the model. The model is designed to help people get through the first stage of investing, which takes us to the next stage. And of course, in life, you go from a young adolescent or young child rather to a young adolescent, a teenager. And of course, teenagers, for the most part, are little rat bags, little gopniks. They want to smoke ciggies out the back of the house. They want to uh, have their first shag. They want to do all sorts of rebellious stuff. And of course, rebellion is is the next stage of the adult growth model. And of course, property investors suffer rebellion. Property investors also go through this phase where they are growing, they've acquired some stuff, and then, just like a teenager, they want to destroy it all. They want to be rebellious. They want to do something faster. They want to change direction. Uh, and of course, teenagers suffer from this, right? They they overestimate everything. <clears throat> they think everyone's having sex. They think everyone's taking drugs. They think everyone's, uh, you know, doing some sort of thing of which almost they create this problem for themselves. And, and again, if your teenage life is not handled well, People end up in all sorts of, of, of problems. They set themselves up to fail in adulthood. 
And let's face it, there is a lot of adults today that have never stopped being teenagers. They've never stopped being rebellious. They can't conform to society. Economically, they can't conform. It's not to say they're bad people. They're very colourful people. Um, but they're still smoking weed, playing bongo drums. Um, they're rebellious. They haven't made it to adulthood. As a property investor, we also go through this. And rebellion comes in various different biases. Rebellion is something whereby property investors almost basically go, screw it, it's not working. And I often see this at about year six. I call it the six-year itch, not the seven-year itch. The six-year itch, property investors become teenagers, they've owned a property for six years and then rebellion hits. Oh, I want to try crypto. Oh, you know, property's too slow. It's not fast enough. Um, You know, oh, I'm going to sell the property and, and, uh, you know, I'm going to try something else. And all of a sudden, this rebellion hits. And of course, a lot of the rebellion is led by a couple of biases and I never know if that's the right way to say bias or biases, the plural. The first one is the bandwagon effect. I've mentioned this one, basically that ideas and beliefs grow as more people adopt them, right? So again, uh, for a lot of people, the rebellion against real estate can be adopted. People jump on this bandwagon, right? Oh, the market's going to subside. I'm getting off. The bandwagon says to get off, so I'm getting off. The bandwagon says to get on, so I'm getting on. Teenagers are driven by bandwagonism. Oh, I want to join the gang. Oh, I need this. I need that. Oh, I've got to look this way. Bandwagon, bandwagon. It's peer group, peer group pressure. Real estate investors should make sure they're never influenced by peer group pressure. It's just a silly, silly bias that is a reflection of our teenage brain. We need to move past that. And of course, uh, rebellion is all about the idea of the Dunning-Kruger effect, which basically is the less you know, the more confident you are. Think about teenagers. They don't know anything, but they're very, very confident. They'll, uh, you know, try and... Um, Stick it right up, yeah, the old teenager. But let's face it, if we were to, you know, if they were to really truly know what they know or what is to be known, rather, they would be shocked. And I think we've all been a teenager. We probably thought we knew everything. And then 20 years later, we're like, wow, I knew nothing. So the Dunning-Kruger effect is a a bias that a lot of property investors suffer from. They basically very confident, they know everything, and again, they know nothing. And so what happens is they terminate their investments. And this is why you can have that duplex, two investors side by side, one keeps going, one doesn't, Dunning-Kruger effect. One thinks they know everything and all of a sudden come confident about the wrong thing to be confident about. Again, this is why we go back to the concept of the false consensus. So many property investors form a, 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 a basically a harmful false consensus that things are not perfect. It's a very teenage thing to do. Uh, they f- form false consensus on their own beliefs around property, values in property, how much a property should be worth after five years of owning it. Um, And all of a sudden, these beliefs impact their decisions. And again, for a lot of people, they never make it to really out of rebellion into adulthood. Rebellion is is a big, big problem for so many property investors. And, uh, you know, I think, um, you know, the more we can sort of understand human nature, the more we can go, okay, I'm being a bit rebellious at the moment. That's affecting the way I'm thinking about stuff. And, you know, if I don't do something about it, I'm going to cheat myself out of real wealth. Now, recently we had an awesome client 
come and do a lecture to other property investors. It was freaking awesome. Donna, you're a champion. This one's to you. You know, this woman has amassed 11 properties and $10 million worth of real estate. Think about that. That's just incredible on its in its own accord. And when I listened to her talk, I was so fascinated because uh, I've been on this journey with Donna um, and Brad, her husband, for you know a fair while. 2008, they got started and it's now 2022, 14 years. Really, what was so amazing with her story was to see her go from you know, being a toddler to a teenager and talking about those teenage years as a property investor, rebellion. She wanted to rebel against the property wasn't good enough, rebel that the market wasn't friendly enough, rebel that, you know, she'd done the wrong thing. She was second guessing herself. She was like, you know, should she invest in other asset classes? Rebellion, rebellion, it happened for years but you know what she did she didn't sell the real estate she held on to it and all of a sudden the results started to come which is the next phase of the real estate journey and the next phase of the adult growth model results and of course for her she saw out her rebellious side of her brain to reach the results model. Those results, of course, were huge because anyone owning $10 million worth of real estate can easily make another million dollars. They just need the market to do 10% capital growth and they've made a million bucks. This is the formula. She's done the Forex growth plan, but she's been going for so long now. She's got through toddler, teenager. Now she's actually realizing what her mistakes were and actually realizing where her self psychology was a big part of the journey not just the real estate so these biases will affect results and of course results is the next syndrome the results if you like is us being a adult all of a sudden we've left school, we realize we've got to make ends meet, we realize we don't earn enough money, we realize, oh my God, I don't live in a nice suburb, and then we start to go, wow, we have to actually make results happen for our world to be moderately enjoyable inside a capitalist society. If we don't focus on results, we're going to be a little gopnik. And of course, uh, inside Australia, a lot of different biases happen at the result period of adulthood. A lot of things that we just got to let go of so we can move forward. And of course, for property investors, same sort of thing. A lot of property investors, again, are starting to see the results and then go through a form of self-sabotage. I think inside of Australia, a very common bias is tall poppy syndrome. Uh, a lot of people, because of where they feel their results are in life, start to pick on someone who's achieved results, which of course is just absolute nonsense. But it's a thing here in Australia that we would prefer to hide from results, yet results matter when it comes to real estate results matter when it comes to life uh you know the reality is most people are not producing the results because they don't focus in that place property investment is a results sport and it does mean that we need to make sure we know how to analyze real estate we know good real estate from bad real estate we accept our mistakes we are uh, not rebellious, but actually thoughtful around what we're trying to achieve. Results in real estate will often take time, but also it's up to us to make sure that we start to understand uh, the idea of different growth and different marginal costs, all reflecting 
the overall return we can create from real estate. So one of the things that quite often happens inside of real estate is we start to make judgment calls on what we own. And this is result-based judgment calls. And quite often we compare ourselves to someone else. And for whatever reason, you know, it's often known as frequency illusion. It's an illusion, right? Um, You know, if you think about buying a car, uh, you think, wow, no one owns that car. It's the most beautiful car in the world. I'm going to drive that car. Uh, Then you buy the car and then you're like, holy cow, has everyone just bought this car? It's it's known as frequency illusion. And for a lot of property investors, they have bought a great property but start to believe it's the same as everyone else's and not great whatsoever. And for whatever reason, a lot of property investors suffer this frequency illusion and go, well, you know, I bought a I bought a perfectly good house. Or I bought a house, it's just like everyone's in, you know, down the street, around the corner. Uh, it's never going to grow. It's never going to do anything. Um, it's it's nothing. And sell the real estate. And the results were there to be taken. And they forego those results because they start to play with their brain. Another brain problem is IKEA, the IKEA effect. And I've talked about this before. It's It's basically the idea that the IKEA business model, which is such a smart business model, is they'll basically flat pack you a desk, you build the desk, and because you build the desk by plugging in some screws and tapping in some sockets, you're actually building this thing. And all of a sudden you become so connected to it that it is known as the IKEA effect. And of course, for a lot of property investors, the results from their real estate is connected to what they buy. The idea of buying uh, an old dump and then tinkering with it, uh, you know, makes no sense to me. It's, It's like, you know, it's a marginal... It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a cost of your marginal return which disappears. And, uh, you know, people are fixing gutters. I mean, how much return can you get from gutters? You can't, right? And so you get this diminishing marginal return effect from the IKEA effect and it f- affects results. All of a sudden, what that looks like for a property investor is they go, oh, all of a sudden I realize now I'm in the results phase of my life. If I go back to my early childhood, when I got started buying property, I bought something which is which is not going to work out. And this is where the diversion of results start to unfold whereby you can have what is known as sunken cost fallacy. In other words, when we invest more into something, it actually makes us want to hold it even longer. And for a lot of property investors, they are investing in a diminishing return asset. They're throwing more good money after bad money. And because they throw more good money after bad money, it makes them hold on to the subpar asset even longer, sunk, sunken cost fallacy. Uh, I had a property as a lemon. It was sunken cost fallacy. I was propping it up, but it was going nowhere. And again, like why people discover this in results is they have carried the asset for such a long period of time and the results don't come. They finally do the real maths realize that there is diminishing marginal return on the investment. And even by holding the investment, the results will still not come. The asset is not worthy. How could they have avoided that in the beginning? Going all the way back to when they were uh, a toddler, when they were in reliance, making sure they relied on the right information, the right plan, the right process, make sure they learnt 
and they crawled before they walked. Too many property investors jump into stuff before they get to know the basics. And of course, this is where sunken cost fallacy comes into play. So the uh, next model, if you like, is for a lot of people, they get to the results section of, of, uh, of life and then they stop. And it is so common. The biggest problem most people have inside society is actually being comfortable. And being comfortable is not a smart place to be because quite often something's going to come along and punch you in the face, so to speak. Uh, the market might do something different. Uh, you know, there could be a huge, huge life impact that comes your way. So what quite often happens is what is known as gambler's bias. So you get a result and uh, you kind of believe that your next step will be affected by your current step. And it is kind of like a classic bias that all of a sudden, you know, you, you felt like you've gambled, you've won, and you can't basically possibly ever win again. Your future possibilities are affected. A lot of property investors either succumb to this uh, bias, if you like, by not reinvesting again and not making the most of their investments and live in a kind of state of mediocrity, or uh, a lot of investors don't see the results because of what I said previously, sunken cost fallacy, that they basically don't believe by ever buying a property you can find the results. So it's going to happen two different ways. One is being unable to find the results. The second way is you found the results, but you don't think you could do it again. And of course, this is why most Australians don't get into a place where they realize their potential from property investment, which is, of course, the final phase of this whole thing, realization. As we grow older and wiser, we realize more. It's as simple as that. And of course, for property investment, it's very similar. Listening to Donna and her $10 million portfolio, her realizations were amazing. She shared so much, what she'd realized along the way, her lessons, her journeys, her losses, her wins. That is property investment. It's not all good. And of course, when it comes to getting to realization, I have some rules. Results and realization go hand in hand. You can't procrastinate. You need to know what your goals are. You need to understand your time horizon. When I buy real estate, I'm not buying it for the next three months. I'm buying it for the next 50 years. When I choose an investment real estate area, I'm choosing it for when I'm 80, not for when I'm, uh, you know, a year older next year, time horizons. Uh, you've got to make sure you don't stay in your comfort zone. Don't become uh, cognitively biased to certain things, certain information. Get out of your comfort zone. Learn as much as you can. Um, don't get distracted. Results are important. Stick to the plan. Don't be rebellious. Rebellion does not serve. Uh, it doesn't work in investments. Anyone who, uh, you know, plays in investments in a serious way is not a rebellious person. They tend to be very, very, very diligent with how they approach things. Don't give up too easily. Don't overcomplicate situations. Understand that psychology pays a part. Our minds quite often create illusions. We just need to understand that that is just the nature of being human. And of course, capitalism is a real thing. So we need to make sure that we play the game, that we realize we are in a race. The time money race is real. 
but we also need to understand from little things, big things grow. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you next time on the Urban Property Investor. Thanks for tuning in to the Urban Property Investor. To never miss an episode, make sure you subscribe to the podcast on your favorite app or on YouTube. And I would love it if you could give the show a rating and share it with your friends and family. In between episodes, you can always keep in touch with me by connecting on social media over Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn. Until we meet again on the next episode of the Urban Property Investor,